I would wake up in the morning, take a shower, have my breakfast, get dressed, and get ready for work. I would then drive to work, do whatever I needed to, come back, watch some TV, do things around the house, get ready for bed, and go to sleep. This was how my day was like. This is how every day was like. I thought this was how everybody lived, but apparently this was not the case. My name was Man, and we were told not to change our routine for any reason. If we did, they said that something quite unpleasant would happen. The sun rarely came out, but this was one of those times where neither clouds or smog, and it was quite visible over the wall. It made me slightly happier, and I smiled as I drove to work. I drove the same route every day, passing buildings that look oh so similar to each other. It put me into a trance, and I'd arrived feeling rather refreshed. I didn't even know what a day was until some, someone told me that it was the same thing as what we'd, we'd call a revolution, a cycle of day and night. We would also use fractions in place of time. It took me a while to get used to the concept of it all. I wanted to know more though, so much more. But they hid much from us, and it may not be possible to learn all that I wanted to know. I had a job at the office at one time. It was very tedious work. I think I had to do it had to do with some kind of statistics. Something about dying. Anyways, it was about eight hours of work and I'd be forty five minutes through when friend asks how I'm doing and I would answer back that I'm doing fine. He then proceeds to talk about his family, how they're doing, what they're doing, and so on. He would end the discussion and we would then get back to work. Now that, now that I think about it, it's almost like we were doing rehearsal over and over. I don't think, I don't know how I lived through it all. He had to do this every day since it was a part of the routine. On my 2,649th day of work, yes, I count them, he informs me that co-worker hasn't been in for the last couple of days. It was considered quite worrisome. Friend told me that... They might have they might have discovered co-worker stumbling on a forbidden word, or at least that's what he thought. He thinks they might be disciplining him. Friend whispers that he knows that co-worker had found a forbidden word since friend walked by co-worker's cubicle and heard him mumbling what sounded like to friend was the word vacation. Nobody knew what it meant and nobody really cared, except for me. I was intrigued by the word, and it soon sparked an intense feeling of curiosity within me. It was like an empty bag in the water. You could push it down all you want, wanted, but it would keep coming back up. It would continually surface. You just couldn't get rid of it. It dominated my mind for the rest of the day, and eventually, I gave in. I looked everywhere I could, but I didn't come up with anything. So the next day I asked friend what side co a co-worker was on when he discovered this word. He replied that he didn't know and that really, he didn't want to know, as it only led to trouble. Why? I asked. He put his mouth to my ear and whispered that they track our movements and that revealing what they could, what they could, could lead to extreme punishments. They could be watching us right now, he said, sounding quite worried. I was puzzled as to how he knew this, so I simply whispered, how? But he ignored the question and went on in normal conversation, and I just went along with it. When I had gotten home, it felt different. I didn't know how to describe it then. It just felt darker, if I could even say that I say that. But I wanted to continue my search for the meaning of the, of the word vacation, so I did. A while later, I thought I heard something, but I thought nothing of it. A short time after that, I heard something else, so I went to check it out, but I couldn't find anything unusual. Before I got back to my search, though, I heard what I thought was a whisper. I didn't 
know what to think at the time. I looked around to try and find out where, where it was coming from, but it was still nothing. I felt uncomfortable at this point. Then, I suddenly heard another whisper, but this time it didn't stop. Others seemed to join it. At first I couldn't hear what they were saying. I, I really couldn't. They were a melody of voices now. As they grew louder, however, the words they said became clearer as they and they transformed into voices. I heard a how and a they every once in a while. I was just in complete wonderment and shock at this. I suddenly realized that there was no outside causes for this, but instead, it came from my head. I was in total awe as the words became clear enough to form questions. I finally managed to focus on in on what they were saying. Most of them just asking, what are you doing? And what are you searching for? But one question stuck out. What is the purpose of doing what you're doing? Can you hear me? I asked back, and they responded with an appropriate answer. Again, what is the purpose of doing what you're doing? was asked. I replied that I was looking at different locations so I could learn more about the, the outside world. They asked, wasn't TV enough? I simply said no. They told me that what I was doing was wrong for two reasons. First, it was, the outs it was outside of my routine, and second, out-of-bounds research was prohibited. I agreed, and with that, the, gra the voices gradually disappeared until there was only silence. Despite the warning, I continued on with feverish delight. I finally found that vacation means to take a day off, work and relax. I was quite surprised from it, and it got me thinking about it. I was still thinking about it as I dozed off into bed. I awoke with a start and managed to get to work on time despite oversleeping. After a while, I found that I was getting bored, and it left me time for thought. It suddenly occurred to me that a vacation meant I didn't have to do what they told me. That I didn't have to be bored. That I could do what I wanted to. But I, I was still put in my place when Boss came out to shake me awake and give me a stern talking to, and said that I could, cannot fall asleep, nor should I stop working at any time. My burning curiosity was still going strong as I came home, and I started to wonder what should I do? I didn't feel right just alienating everyone. I knew. Be besides, if I was to be caught, who knows what they would do have done to me. The indecisiveness really affected me for the next week. I ended up getting dehydrated at work because I would, I would sweat so much. I just couldn't sit still. I got headaches, nausea, stomach pains, the works. I finally couldn't take living like this anymore. I just decided to leave and through my eyes the advantages far outweighed the disadvantages. That night I packed my bags and left the house. I felt incredibly relieved at the thought of leaving this place. I stuffed the vehicle, I stuffed the vehicle and drove off in the parking place and immediately made a wrong turn. This alerted them and they soon took action. While I drove, an image abruptly went through my mind, that of a man holding his leg in pain. Then before I could contemplate what I was seeing, it disappeared, and it was repl replaced by another image, of that of someone vomiting, and I felt myself gagging. It goes on like this for a while. Eventually, I have to stop driving and pull over. The, Im the images eventually disappear. I, feel I felt dizzy and soon I was back on the road. I thought that was it, but suddenly, I got, I got hit with a second wave of images, but more intense than before. I saw images of falling, death, and blood this time, accompanied by their sounds, and for the first time, I truly felt my emotions were coming out. I wasn't feeling cautious or anxious or any of those things. I felt the first strong emotion. I felt frightened sweating and breathing really heavily, teeth clenching, even wanting to cry, and yet I continued to drive because I had to. Finally, the second wave was gone. 
I started to relax after a short while, but I saw a police vehicle coming up behind me, and I had to pull over. He pulled up behind me and got out of the vehicle. He walked up to my window and asked, What are you doing after curfew? And why are you in unfamiliar territory? I didn't have an answer for him. Suddenly, he started laughing, and for a split second, he changed. The eyes were incredibly small and beady, almost impossible to see out of him. They had also become farther apart, almost like a chameleon in his mouth. It almost completely spread from ear to ear in a ghastly smile. Everything else on his head seemed to melt off. Ears, nose, hair, and before I realized what I was looking at, he was back to normal. He tried to arrest me, but in my state I must have hit harder than I thought because he was laying on the ground, unconscious before me. I raced back to my car and sped off knowing full well what I had, I had to do to escape. I remember a friend telling me how a co-worker was caught and was sent to a facility to be disciplined. I realized I didn't want to be under full control like the others. I was no longer able to live where I lived. I wanted something. I wanted something different. I was getting away with escape and I smiled at the thought of it. I was getting excited about it. Then the third wave came. This time it was much worse and accompanying the visuals and sounds was a warning. The voice said in a monotone voice that these are the things I will encounter in the outside world if I go through what I'm doing. Viscera, limbs, insects crawling out of wounds, of absorption, rolling heads, screaming, the spurt of blood. These are the things I saw, and I broke down crying. I heard sirens, and I saw that they had sent policemen after me. I wiped the tears away so I could concentrate on the road, but they, were, they still kept coming. Then, without warning, I vomited and nearly lost control, and yet the images still kept coming, trying to get me, tried to, get me to come to my senses. The police were gaining ground on me, and I sped up even faster with either side of the street, just becoming a blur. The wall was coming up. It's much weaker than the door. I put the pedal to the floor and ducked my head, and I heard a th thunderous crash as the vehicle forced its way through the other side. The, the wall was now behind me. One of the police vehicles tried to force its way through, but it only got shot back towards the others, who decided to stop. They got out and started firing in my direction. The bullets passed through easily, and, try not, and I try not to be hit. I rocketed away. With the city line disappearing over the horizon, a new revelation came over me. I was free of my old life. For this first time, I felt excited about something. I was looking forward to my new life, and I can control it myself. This I could say in my new life. That was the best day one could ever hope to have.